In lecture 5, we will go over some basic features and characteristics of nucleic acids. Both this picture and the cited paper are quite familiar to biologists and medical professionals. Aside from some controversial discussions as to who was involved in the discovery of the DNA structure, the 900 words paper is probably one of the most influential papers from the last century that shaped the science and allowed us to enjoy many of the benefits triggered by this discovery. Our previous understanding of the central dogma was focused on the transmission of information from the nucleus by the process of transcription of DNA into RNA, followed by the transport of RNA into the cytoplasm where the RNA is translated into proteins and ending up with the export of proteins from cells as effector molecules. The basic flow didn't change much, the information is still following the same direction. So the replication of DNA is not a part of gene expression and every newly created DNA strand should be identical to the original as a principle. The transcription occurs in nucleus and results in mature RNA, which is then transported to the cytoplasm, and in cytoplasm translation of molecules occur, resulting in synthesis of uh, proteins or polypeptides. The modifications introduced in the central dogma pertain to the reciprocal regulations by the downstream molecules over the level of activities of their parent processes. DNA is transcribed into RNA, in turn RNA is translated into protein, however RNA can be reversally transcribed into DNA in some viruses and bacteria, and DNA can self-replicate. Finally, the resulting proteins affect the level of both transcription and translation by binding to respective factors and regulating the RNA-DNA activities by activation or inhibition of the processes. So again, the flow of information in the sense of cell replication is unidirectional, but the molecules have their own sets of rules and principles, which we are just starting to research and understand better, partially because of the technological progress in sequencing and bioinformatics. During the past century, the definition of a gene has been refined from its conceptual origin in the early 1900s, with the discovery of RNA and DNA structure, the splicing process that was described initially in the 70s and during the past three decades, and lastly, from 2000 till present, we see a widespread enrichment in the un annotated transcripts. Exonic regions are depicted as blue boxes, with transcript shown as error below, spliced and unspliced regions of transcripts. A hypothetical mutation is shown as a red triangle. Note that the definition of a gene expands to include multiple transcripts, so a single mutation can affect many different transcripts and thus potentially could have multiple and more subtle phenotypes. Now, to complicate the matter, the levels of regulations are quite diverse, and as of current knowledge status, the diversity of proteins is based on the splicing events, while functions of proteins and nucleotides are affected by the post-translational and post-transcriptional modifications. The prior understanding of the genetic diseases as being caused exclusively by changes in nucleotides is being reviewed to add the influence of uh, metabolome and proteome on the health and disease status. And as we are beginning to understand, the environmental factors have a very important role not only in our lifestyles, but also in the manifestations of our biological functions. The basic molecules of genetic material consist of nucleic acids or nucleotides. The molecules were discovered over a century ago in the nucleus of cells uh, coined as nuclein at that time. The chemical structure was described just a couple of years later in 1871 by Kossel, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery in 1910. Actually, most of the Nobel Prizes in biology and medicine were awarded for discoveries related to nucleic acids. These are essential molecules of a living organism consisting of two main types of molecules, deoxy and ribosugar monophosphates, the main difference between them being the sugar mortier. 
the genetic information that is transmitted from generation to generation is encrypted into double helix anti-parallel strings of molecules of the deoxyribonucleic acids or DNA, the majority of which is non-coding. You obviously know the pairing principles according to which uh, pyrimidines T or C are pairing with purines A and G respectively. The entire DNA molecules are packed into chromosomes having a constant number and healthy living organisms, but differing in total number of chromosomes among species. DNA is located primarily in the nucleus of cells and some organelles in eukaryotes, while in prokaryotes the majority of DNA is found in cytoplasm. Each molecule of an individual organism has the same content of DNA, with exception for some special organelles such as mitochondria, and the genetic codes also differ between the nucleolar and mitochondrial DNA, as well as between eukaryotic and prokaryotic molecules. The main hereditary unit is the gene, consisting of DNA sequences from which the proteins are transcribed. Because the majority of DNA is non-coding, there are certainly some other types of DNA, for example the RNA genes, which are transcribed exclusively into RNA. Structurally, the DNA within the nucleus is associated with proteins, forming the nucleoproteins in eukaryotes, while in prokaryotic cells nuclear proteins are found within the nucleoid. The majority of bacteria contains plasmids, which are small circular extra-chromosomal DNA molecules that carry the antibiotic-resistant genes and may transfer the information from one bacteria to another through the so-called horizontal transfer mechanism. The characteristics of bacteria having plasmids is used extensively in molecular biology as vehicles for delivery of genomic information during the functional genomic experiments, such as overexpression and silencing of genes of interest. The ribonucleic acids are also very diverse by their function, localizations, and multidimensional structures. RNA is present in all compartments of cells, and some RNA is circulating with small microvesicles, such as exosomes. RNA is easily degraded by the RNA's enzymes that are present on our skins, hair, and other external surfaces, which is one of the major reasons for careful handling of RNA samples in biological experiments. The principles of pairing are the same as for the DNA, except that the thymidine pyrimidines present in DNA is replaced for uracil in RNA. In contrast to the double helix DNA, the RNA molecules are mostly single-stranded, but form loops and other multidimensional structures, and also may hybridize with DNA. The DNA-RNA complex being more stable at the exposure of the temperature and other conditions compared with the pure RNA molecules. RNA molecules are very diverse and have different functions, being, for example, the intermediary molecules between the DNA and proteins. mRNA, messenger RNA is coding for protein, the ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA are responsible for translation, and some other RNAs from the protein synthesis group serve as signal recognition particles. RNA molecules also participate in post-transcriptional modifications and or DNA replication. Among these functional groups, the small nuclear RNA and the small nucleol RNA are responsible primarily for the splicing processes, and ribonucleases play an important role in the maturation of RNA molecules that participate in protein synthesis. Last but not least, RNA plays an important role in regulations of gene expression. Among the best known types of regulatory RNA, the microRNA directly regulates the gene expression by degrading the messenger RNA, while the pi RNA are regulating primarily the repeating elements or transposon. The above classification of RNA is quite conventional, as there are many more types of RNA which have important functions that we either don't understand entirely or just don't know exactly what it is. Some of other types of RNA include the mitochondrial RNA, exosomal transcripts of unknown functions or TUF, 
and double-stranded RNA in viruses. With advancement of the research technologies and our knowledge, the repertoire of RNA most likely will be larger. In addition, we have a wide variety of RNA in lower organisms. This is an example of the estimated secondary structure of the non-coding transcript variant 2 of the PCSK9 gene. Presence of loops in the RNA structure may define its functions, stability. The secondary structure have regions of base pairing similar to the ones in DNA molecules. For the majority of molecules to be functional, a maturation process is required. In cases of uh, messenger RNA, the molecules originate as precursors or pre-mRNA that is synthesized from DNA in the nucleus. Pre-mRNA is single-stranded mix of exons and introns, the later being excised as part of the maturation process, resulting in mature mRNA. Splicing events occur at the pre-mRNA level. While the heterogeneous nuclear RNA is often time used as synonym for pre-mRNA, the difference is that not all HN RNA or heterogeneous nuclear RNA transcripts are exported into the cytoplasm. Overall, the maturation of RNA is a rapid process and the majority of RNA exists in the mature form. The ribosomal RNA consists of large and small subunits and the sizes of such subunits differ between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. The messenger RNA is sandwiched between the ribosomal RNA subunits and the genes for ribosomal RNA are located on specific loci within genomes. It is the most abundant type of RNA with over 90-85% being ribosomal RNA and in microarrays the abundance of uh, ribosomal RNA may create a high noise background and usually the ribosomal RNA is removed from the processed samples by hybridizing them with oligos complementary to the ribosomal RNA sequences. This slide summarizes the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic ribosomal RNA. The main important features to remember about ribosomal RNA is that in prokaryotes, ribosomal RNA is the target of many antibiotics and also serves as the identifier of species, specifically the 16S ribosomal RNA. The ribosomal RNA is present in all cells and some microRNAs originate from the ribosomal RNA types. The diversity of RNA types dictates the existence of a large number of RNA-related databases, usually maintained by groups of scientists focused on the RNA research. Some of these databases are curated, while the majority are just a collection of data submitted and annotated by individual scientists or laboratories around the world. Now, to add an additional level of complexity to the central dogma of biology, if you consider the variety of RNA and their roles in the regulations of biological processes, you could easily imagine that RNA's action could be affecting any of the processes within the transmission of information pathway. The main methods of nucleic acid studies is sequencing or determination of precise order of nucleotides within DNA or RNA molecules. In molecular biology, sequencing helps in defining the structure and functions of genes, proteins, and their association with diseases. Lately, the nucleic acids became a very attractive target for drug development as part of the personalized or targeted medicine. In evolutionary biology, nucleic acid sequences serve as main criteria for species relational similarity and the evolution itself. In metagenomics, sequencing helps in understanding the interplay between the environmental factors and the living organisms. From the progress point of view, the last 50 to 70 years have been very productive in studying the nucleic acids, the main breakthrough being achieved within the past 10-15 years after the publication of the draft human genome in 2003. The cost of sequencing has been dramatically reduced, allowing to include some methods into the clinics and to diagnose some conditions that could not be otherwise interpreted from the causation point of view. Along with the reduction in cost of technology came the large number of genomes and molecules that have been sequenced in the past decade. 
Today the number of genomes sequenced each year is in the thousands and tens of thousands, with every resident from some geographical regions being sequenced. Such increase in number of sequences created the conditions for the development of bioinformatics in the last decades. Just to remind you the principles of nucleic acid synthesis, this image shows that the addition happens by joining the sugar backbone at the hydroxyl group or AH to the phosphate group of the existing chain. The reaction requires DNA polymerase along with some optimal salt, pH and temperature conditions and results in extension of the existing nucleotide chain for as long as the polymerase and the free nucleotides are present. Labeled nucleotides could be added to the reaction of DNA synthesis and we would be able to see the process as it goes. However, if we add the dideoxynucleotides that don't have an oxygen in the 3' prime carbon within the sugar base, the reaction will stop at this nucleotide because the next nucleotide will have no OH group to expand or to attach to. So the principles of sequencing consist of adding mixture of nucleotides, one specific ATCG at a time, and recording the labeled nucleotides as they are attached to the grown chain. The initial methods included the separation of nucleotides by their molecular size on gel and then combining the results into one string. While this picture is an imitation of the process, the actual electrophorogram is less precise in identification of their nucleotides. As you can see on this image, some nucleotides may overlap, like on the 10th position, and the resulting sequences may have and usually have many sequencing errors. However, the modern methods of next generation sequencing, which we will talk about in the future sessions, produce a digital read of the nucleotides order and exactly identifies the nucleotides that have been incorporated. The following video is a simplistic animated interpretation of the Sanger sequencing method. The first method of sequencing the genetic code was devised by Fred Sanger. To sequence the DNA, it must first be separated into two strands. The strand to be sequenced is copied using chemically altered bases. These altered bases cause the copying process to stop each time one particular letter is incorporated into the growing DNA chain. This process is carried out for all four bases, and then the fragments are put together like a jigsaw to reveal the sequence of the original piece of DNA. Based on the Sanger sequencing method, it was possible to sequence the entire human genome for a staggering $3 billion US dollars price and within a quiet lengthy process that lasted 10 years. Initiated by the NIH, the process was also done in parallel by the company called Celera Genomics that used a shotgun method with a much larger strings of nucleotides and lens. The shotgun sequencing allowed to speed up the human genome project and uh, basically this method does not require the knowledge of the reference genome a priori. In shotgun sequencing, the overlapping fragments are combined into the final assembly. In this simplified example, none of the sequence 1 shotgun, sequence 2 shotgun have the full length of the final sequence. However, by combining them into the final assembly, the scientists were able to sequence almost the entire genome in a similar mode. The shotgun sequencing is named by analogy with random firing of a shotgun and the method usually requires assembly of the resulting genome.